get everything opened up here, and then we'll start the procedure. And for the record, in terms of a pain scale, if you can compare it to something. Probably more like a bee sting. The latest office innovation is a microchip implanted in the skin. This is the first American company to ever try this. So what are they tracking? And would you say yes if your boss asked you to do the same? So if my employer wanted to microchip me as if I was their puppy, I would have a huge problem with it, and I would probably quit. You could argue that the government is tracking you everywhere you go, but they are already with your phones. Yeah, it just seems a bit permanent. If you already have an Apple Watch that you're wearing around, at least you can take that off at some point. Not something I would do. I think it's a great idea, and I think it would make it all a lot easier. I just think that you have to back it up with maybe some doctors saying it's good for your health, and then I think I would I would do it. Three Square Market is a company working on one of the biotech advances at the forefront, implantable RFID or radio frequency ID microchips. The tech has been around for decades, used to track pets, packages, and livestock, but now the Wisconsin-based company is trying to make the implants mainstream. Even with all the risks and unknowns associated with this technology, I was really curious what it'd be like to have an implant. So I traveled to Wisconsin to get chipped, thinking, what's the worst that could happen? The chip is coming out at the end of the day. And the RFID chip is already inside there? Yes. And it's a little bit larger than a grain of rice? Correct. Jasmine rice, I think. Basmati. Basmati. That's Andy Whitehead, better known as Gonzo. He's a local body piercer with 17 years of experience who was brought in to implant the microchips. I was slightly nervous about having the microchip inserted inside my body, given the size of the needle, and also nervous about what it could potentially mean for me, but here we go. Just take a nice big, 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 big deep breath in and exhale really slow. And there we go. It's in there. It's in there. Pretty quick and easy. I feel like a cyborg. Here you go, you're a proud member now. Indeed, part of the club. Just like that, I was part of a small group of people on Earth pushing the boundaries of what it means to be human. And within minutes, I was meeting with their tech team to get my chip programmed. I guess what you're saying, to sort of put it in layman's terms, if I, I wouldn't need to take this out until we live in that futuristic world where everything's wireless, cash is gone, autonomous vehicles take us everywhere, and I'm just beeping my way through my day. Really, probably you'd never have to take it out, and this is what we think is gonna propel us into that next stage in life, the cashless society like they're doing overseas already. This would facilitate that because you wouldn't need to carry any cards or cash. Everything would literally be stored on the chip. There is no GPS tracker in the chip, which was really good to know. And the applications for it were actually pretty sweet. I could now open doors, fire off texts, forget all of my passwords, and even make credit card payments. I started to wonder, is it worth getting this thing removed? And what I'll do is I'll set yours up so that I can make a phone call off of it right now. Success. Stuck in this internal debate about whether to keep the chip, I thought I'd talk to some employees to get their take. One who has the chip and another who opted out. You know, I wasn't opposed to it, but they had so many people that wanted the chip that I felt I would just wait for a few months and see how everybody reacted to it, if anybody got sick from it, anybody got infections, you know, you know, any of that stuff. And it's everybody that has gotten one has been just doing just fine on it. You got chipped on your very first day. I guess the number one question I have is why? Like, why did you feel you had to do it besides seeing everyone else? So I found out through social media that the company that I was moving from Colorado to come to Wisconsin to work uh, was optionally microchipping their employees. It sounds really futuristic and bizarre. And at first I wasn't gonna do it. And how much information did you have? Did you know that you could open doors? Sure, but how much information do you have about the chip in general? All of the questions that the news were asking, all the questions the employees were asking, all the right questions, uh, the nitty gritty questions were there. So I knew what it was made of, I knew what it could do, what it could do in the future. I was well educated before getting a microchip in my hand. They offered to take it out at the end of the day and I was like absolutely don't want this thing in my body longer than it needs to be and I'm kind of having second thoughts. I think I it might be fun to play around with it some more. I don't know, I'm having some, some thoughts, some inner conflicts about whether to keep it in or take it out. Upon application, I, there's a risk of infection, but beyond that, are there any downsides to having an RFID chip implanted anywhere in your body? This is an approved device. There's been nothing that has come out since 2004 that has done anything to change 
the FDA's stance on it. Well, for one thing, you know, I don't, I'm not sure it's been completely, it's been conclusive whether or not these are safe for the human body. I know the FDA approved them years and years ago, but I think long term is sort of when we find these things out. That's Michelle Demoy. She researches how new technology could impact personal privacy. Along with health complications, I was also concerned about the security of the chip itself. Just how safe was my personal information on the chip? And was it safer there in my hand than in my wallet or phone? What ends up happening in a lot of situations with technology, and you can even point to any of the, the major tech companies that you interact with on a daily basis, they start off wanting data for one reason and, and end up using it for many other reasons. And so that switch of what your expectations are, you know, is a little different when you are using a device or service where you ostensibly have an ability to walk away from it. And when you have something implanted in your body, of course, that, that removes that ability. 34 billion avenues exist for your information to travel down every single day. Everything you do, whether you're checking Facebook, checking out at the supermarket, driving your car, anything, your information's everywhere. Say I was sitting at a booth at a diner, because it doesn't have to be a line of sight read. You know, it could go through a Band-Aid and potentially through a box or something thicker. Say someone was hoping to steal someone's identity, they're just scanning randomly in a restaurant. Could they pick up my information? Is anything unhackable, that, that, that's a stupid word. There's a reason why it's not in the dictionary. If you take the RFID chip that's now on every credit and debit card in this country and in the world, you have more problems with that because the reality is, is this the thing that's in your hand has a 256-bit encrypted password to get into it. And it's significantly harder to try to take anything off of this than that card that's sitting in your wallet right now. Well, I think one thing that people forget is as technology gets more and more sophisticated and evolves, the technologies to break it also evolve and get more sophisticated. And for the moment, am I okay? I would say that you're okay. I would say you might want to think about not, you know, whether the long-term use of it puts you at a higher risk than the benefit that you're getting. You might have a curiosity as a journalist and, and want to kind of see how, how this works. But I think beyond that, if there's no benefit to you, I would say, take it out. Even though there are a lot of lingering questions about this technology, I decided to keep the chip anyway. So for full disclosure, I actually got microchipped. Uh, it's in my hand right here. And if you guys want to touch it. God, why would you do that? Truth is, the potential of this technology is vast. It's being tested for security checkpoints and military bases. Doctors are using it to better track patient health data. In Sweden, chipped residents are using it to pay for things, like their train commute. And it could even help make the smart guns we've seen in movies like Skyfall a reality. Encode it to your palm print so only you can fire it. On the regulation side of things, what would you say to lawmakers about the benefits of biohacking and potential risks? Like, what would you say a lawmaker who's just finding out about biohacking and people implanting different things and trying sort of CRISPR and gene mutation? Um, what's your message to them? It's basically what you don't know you don't know. And the only way to find out something about this is compared to the driverless cars and other things that are far-fetched is we need to experiment with it. We need to uh, see what the benefits are before we really judge it either way. So if things were to go horribly wrong and spiral out of control, if I needed this out, I could do it myself. But I don't want it out. It's a funny feeling being at the frontier of wearable tech. So for now, it'll just sit there, tucked under my skin, the start of a question about what it really means to be human.